So some tech nerds in some comment sections just keep saying that if Apple doesn't bring a high refresh display to the iPhone 12, well, then they're not bringing the iPhone 12 home. Dead. RIP. Done. And the other 99 out of 100 people are saying, I what now? Sponsored by Brilliant. I'm Renee Ritchie, and for everything you need to know about the upcoming iPhone 12, just hit that subscribe button and bell right now. So if you're not familiar with 120 hertz displays, if you don't know what they are or why any of us would be talking about them at all, let me give you a super quick TLDR. Now, I'm totally gonna cheat a little, okay, a lot, by not talking about the refresh rate or how many times a second the display refreshes the pixels on it, but about something I think will be far more resonant with far more people frames per second. See, with video or animation, nothing really moves. What we see as movement is really a series of still images changing rapidly over a short period of time. It's like a flip book. You draw one picture per page, change the picture ever so slightly on every page, and when you flip through them, it looks like they're moving. That's basically how films work, just with 24 pictures or frames a second. Because back in the day, that was enough to fool our brains into buying the illusion, but not so much that it cost a of money to film and shoot. Now, because we've gotten used to seeing 24 frames per second in film, at the cinema, it just looks cinematic, which is why a lot of YouTube channels, including mine, sticks to 24 frames per second, even though YouTube will happily support 30, 60 even. And 30 is a traditional frame rate for television in North America, which is why TV looks smoother in both good and bad ways, when done well, like a primetime show, when done badly, like a soap opera. The iPhone has been 60 frames per second since launch, double television. Basically, because if it dropped even a single frame, Steve Jobs would just drop it on someone's head. Figuratively, not literally, I hope. And for other reasons, I'll get to in a minute. So 120 frames per second is double that again. The pixels on the display updating 120 times a second instead of 60. And that brings with it some huge benefits and some potential challenges, if not outright problems. So, okay. There are some real advantages when it comes to 120 hertz displays. Rock solid 60 frames per second was critical to Apple when they launched the original iPhone back in 2007. Twice as fast as television, it made the interface animation, scrolling through the lists, pinch and zoom through photos and maps, all of it, not just look buttery smooth, but feel it. It created the illusion of direct manipulation, that it was locked onto your fingers when you touched it, just instantly responsive, like when you moved your fingers, you were actually moving the pixels. Then in 2017, Apple announced ProMotion for the iPad Pro. Now ProMotion wasn't high frame rate, not exactly. It was adaptive frame rate, but it could adapt. It could boost all the way up to 120 frames per second to make scrolling, pinching, zooming, all even smoother, and Apple Pencil feel even more like a real pencil. In other words, even smoother than butter like Guy, and it's legit terrific for anything like interfaces, animations, and gaming. People were psyched when Fortnite shipped at 60 frames per second on the iPhone XR and iPhone XS a couple of years ago. So even the idea of double that on the iPhone 12 has people double psyched. Also, for people like me who watch videos far more than we game, the best thing about adaptive 120 hertz refresh is that adaptive part. It quintuples perfectly down to 24 frames per second. So it shows everything from YouTube videos to Hollywood movies, just as nature and cinema intended. So yeah, I'm a total display nerd and I want it badly. And if you want it badly as well, hit that like button. But I know any of us don't want it badly. So real talk, there are some issues with 120 hertz displays that very few people, especially nerds, will tell you up front but you'll hear all about loudly and repeatedly if you just stick around and listen. First, they're way easier to implement on LCD than OLED, which is why the iPad Pros had it since 2017 and the iPhone hasn't since it switched to OLED in 2017. OLED is just such a complicated technology with a ton of really good characteristics, but a ton of really bad ones as well, ones that require serious mitigations to overcome. I've explained a lot of those in a bunch of previous videos. So seriously, hit that subscribe bell and button and check them all out. Now, other companies have been doing both 90 Hertz and 120 Hertz, if not more on OLED and with varying degrees of success for a while already. Some of them do it some of the time. And yeah, you can force it, but it can also switch automatically when like a cloud goes across the sun outside and the 
ambient brightness of your living room changes. And you can just see the refresh rate downshift in the middle of a game and just nothing in the world makes sense anymore. Others let you do it manually and you can choose between lower resolutions with higher refresh rates and higher resolutions with lower refresh rates. And as you switch, you can literally see the white point change and it makes you hate your own eyes for a hot minute. And some of them have been getting software updates to try and fix at least some of that because 120 Hertz OLED panels, at least so far, haven't been great when it comes to color management, low brightness levels, not like inky blacks, but like you're in a dark room and you wanna lower the brightness of your phone. And the mother of all problems, battery life. Because a display is one of the most power hungry parts of the device, having it refresh twice as much uses, wait for it, significantly more power. Now, Apple designs their own displays, sometimes with their own material requirements, and has Samsung fab them on their OLED process. Apple also makes their own display controllers and has functionality for that built in at the silicon level. But Apple also has a complete DCI P3 wide gamut pipeline. That means it can show richer reds, deeper greens, just better color than the old RGB system, with device level calibration at the factory and complete color management all the way through from taking a photo to displaying that photo. And it's why an old RGB image and a new DCI P3 image can be displayed side by side on a web page on an iPhone and look just fine. And why an LCD iPhone 11 so closely matches an OLED iPhone 11 Pro that even though they're completely different display technologies, they still look pretty much the same. And it's also why on the iPhone 11 Pro, we saw such dramatic battery life improvements last year because Apple found a way to not just make the chipset more efficient, but the OLED displays as well. And if that goes away, those battery life gains go away with it. Apple may well ship 120 Hertz with the iPhone 12, quite possibly just the iPhone 12 Pro. Like maybe they're good. Maybe they've just figured it all out. They've got all of it just handled. Or if it does screw with the color management, or it makes low brightness problematic, or the power drain is just too much, Apple may do what they've done with a bunch of other technologies and just decide to wait. Wait for the technology to solve those problems. Remember, this is the same Apple that waited until 2017 and the iPhone 10 before they decided 60 Hertz OLED was good enough for them. On the iPhone, they're still not happy enough with things like consistent brightness levels to use it on the iPad at scale. Or maybe Apple is just gonna wait for production capacity on LTPO OLED panels big enough for the iPhone. So like the Apple Watch, they won't just boost up to 120 Hertz for high frame rate, but down to one for super low frame rate, like an always on lock screen display. Hey, a nerd can dream. And if you're dreaming the same dream, let me know in the comments. Now, if Apple does ship 120 Hertz display on the iPhone 12, it'll make a lot of people just like me, super, super happy just like HDR on the iPhone 10 made us and me super happy. But it also made most of the world just go, what now? And that's the thing. If you ask a bunch of people like me on tech Twitter or tech YouTube, if we want 120 Hertz refresh on the next iPhone, nay, if we demand it, we'll say, yeah, hell yeah. Why wasn't it there last year? Nokia had it back in 1812. Just like if you ask us if we want cake, we'll say hell yeah to that as well. But if you tell us that cake is gonna cost $100, well, then we stop and think. Same way when you add context to 120 Hertz, even people like me stop and think. Would you still want 120 Hertz if it messed with low brightness levels? Maybe. If it screwed up color management, maybe not. If it trashed battery life, we'll cut you. And that's just me. If you ask the other 99% of the market, they'd say, even after watching this video, 120 what now? Seriously, this is the same market where some people just double face palm thumbnailed so hard at the iPhone XR, not even being 1080p in 2018. And it, it clowned them by not only becoming the best seller that year, but by being followed up by the same display on the iPhone 11 being the best seller repeat just last year. Now, you could certainly argue that the iPhone 12 going OLED across the lineup means Apple will need some other form of differentiation or segmentation between the standard and pro models this year. And 120 Hertz is a good one. And I'd agree, but only to a point. Again, outside of the tech nerds, the vast majority of the market just doesn't make purchasing decisions based on display techs or specs. Some just get the best or biggest version every year because they're on an annual update program and others just buy it every time they upgrade, however long that is. And 
even for people who are picking and choosing. Typically it's things like cameras and battery life that are the key drivers of purchase intent. Which is why if 120 hertz hurts battery life, people won't be happy about having it. They'll be mad, which TBH, I still kind of wish was the case with millimeter wave 5G, but that's very different marketing spend and video. So sure, not having 120 hertz means Apple will get just raked across the coals by every tech review on YouTube and on the blogs and in podcasts for a good week or so. But a month later, like with the iPad Pro, a lot of us, even us nerds, will forget it's even there. I mean, yeah, once we'll see it, there'll be no going back, but most of us just won't go back. That's why even design details, like the colors, the finishes, the stainless steel antenna, all of that will likely drive more mainstream purchasing decisions than 120 versus 60 Hertz or XDR versus HDR, even, God help us, notch size, at least for the vast majority of buyers. And again, I'm saying that as someone who really, deeply, truly wants to 120 Hertz, all the things. I've just been doing my brilliant courses long enough to be realistic about it, which turns out to be one of the absolute best uses of all this work from home time. See, with Brilliant's whole new math course library, you can brush up on fundamentals, probability, algebra, calculus, trigonometry, differential equations, geometry, all the maths for school, for work, for fun, for demand forecasting and market analysis. Brilliant is a problem solving based website and app with a hands-on approach with over 60 interactive courses in math, but also science and computer science, courses that can help you achieve your goals in STEM, starting with one small commitment to learning and building up to long-term challenge and growth. So go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie and sign up for free. And the first 200 of you can also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscription. And you'll also be really helping out the channel. Thanks, Brilliant. Thanks to all of you for your support. Check out the iPhone 12 playlist right there and see you next video.